Hi everyone, we are back with another video on deep learning. This video is part of a series of attention mechanism and the transformers. As you may know, recently large language models or LLMs have gained a lot of popularity due to recent improvements like chat GPT and attention mechanism is at the heart of such models. So my goal is to explain the concepts behind attention mechanism with visual representations so that by the end of this series you will have a good understanding of attention mechanism and transformers. But this particular video is dedicated to self-attention mechanism using a method called a scaled dot product attention. Since this video involves a lot of matrix multiplication, I made another video previously as a recap of matrix multiplication, so please feel free to check out that other video if you need a recap on that. The link is in the description below. Here is the outline of this video. First, I will introduce the concept of attention in natural language processing or NLP with an example sentence in English and we will see what attention tries to achieve. Then we get into more details on how attention works, focusing on the scaled dot product attention. So we will define different vectors and matrices involved in such attention mechanism and then work through different operations applied to those matrices step by step. So let's get to it. Now let's start with a motivating example. We have a sentence, Jane is going to the cinema to watch a new and followed by a blank. So what could be placed in that blank space? Some possible answers are movie, comedy, a new action movie or a new romantic movie. And if we had more context, for example, if we knew that Jane loves comedy, then we could easily predict that Jane is going to watch a new comedy. But for sure, we cannot say book, cat, grocery store, or tennis. This prediction is all based on the context or the information that is provided in the sequence of the words. In a high level, this is how a language model is trained and how it works. So given the context of previous words, a language model has to predict the next word. And in order to do this, the language model has to understand the relationship between the words in the sequence. And then, based on that relationship, it can learn which words to focus on for predicting that blank space. So now let's see these relationships in a graph. Here, I am showing them using these arrows between each pair of words. Every word in the sentence has to attend to other words with a different degree. In other words, similarity of those words are based on the context. For example, the word cinema and the word watch have a stronger relationship, which can lead to predicting the word movie in the blank space. And the goal of an attention model is to capture the relationship between the words in the sequence that represent the context similarity. We can represent the context similarity using a matrix where each row and each column corresponds to individual words of the sentence. In this heat map, the higher context similarity is shown in red and lower similarity is shown in blue. Although this is just an example to explain the concept, but this is not obtained from a real computation. The purpose here is to explain the concept of attention matrix as a similarity matrix between the words in a sentence. So by now, we have a clear understanding of what attention mechanism does. It then the goal is to build a context similarity matrix. And now we want to work on a model called a scaled dot product attention that was introduced in this paper titled Attention is all you need. 
I have to mention that the dot product attention is not novel as it existed before this paper. But this paper added a scaling factor that improved its performance. While this scaling is a minor enhancement, but this paper is famous for a special architecture called Transformer. And this is the first paper that used attention mechanism in a feed-forward network. Because papers prior to this were using attention in a recurrent network, like LSTM or GRU. We don't want to get distracted further, so let's see how a scale dot product attention works. I will cover the transformer architecture in a future video. This diagram shows how attention mechanism works. It basically receives three matrices, a query matrix Q, a key matrix K, and a value matrix V. Note that the masking step is optional, so we'll remove that for simplicity. On the left side of the diagram, it computes the similarity between matrices Q and K using a dot product or matrix multiplication. After that, it scales the resulting matrix and normalizes the similarities using the softmax function to get the attention matrix. And finally, it performs another matrix multiplication between our third vector V and the computed attention matrix. Next, we will see how these matrices are obtained and we'll go through these steps one by one. The matrices Q, K, and V are in fact sequences where each row corresponds to each token in our input sequence. Based on a common convention, we represent the rows of Q, K, and V with lowercase bold symbols to differentiate them from the matrices. So lowercase symbol Q is the query vector of size DK, and lowercase symbol K is the key vector which must have the same size as Q, since we will perform dot product between Q and K. And the lowercase symbol V is the value vector which can have a different size than Q and K. So we show its size with DV. Since these are row vectors, we can use a subscript notation to show their dimensionality. For example, Q sub 1 by DK, K sub 1 by DK, and V sub 1 by DV. In practice, it's easier to make these vectors have the same size, since it will be simpler to track their dimensionalities. So we will use notation D as the dimensionality of all three vectors. Now let's see how these vectors and matrices are computed. We are showing all the tokens in our input sequence as T1 to T11, since we have 11 tokens in the sentence. So the sequence length for this example is 11. Also, assume that prior to this attention layer, we have fed these tokens through some layers such as an embedding layer, and we have obtained these feature vectors x1 to x11. So these x1 to x11 also form a sequence, and they all have size d, so row vectors of dimensionality 1 by d. Concatenating these features x1 to x11 will form a matrix X which has dimensionality T by D, where T is the sequence length and here it is 11. Then on each of these feature vectors xi, we perform three matrix multiplication, one with a learnable weight matrix WQ to get the query vector QI, then another matrix multiplication of xi with WK to get the key vector KI, and finally the third matrix multiplication of XI with the weight matrix WV to get the value vector VI. The three weight matrices are learnable with size D by D, and they are all shared among the elements of the input sequence X. 
We can go through each feature XI sequentially to compute QI, KI, and VI from I1 to I11, or we can perform these operations more efficiently using the entire feature sequence X multiplied by WQ, WK, and WV. So let's have a quick recap of what we have said so far. We have fed the sequence of tokens with length T to some layers including an embedding layer and have obtained feature vector XI corresponding to each token TI. Then from this feature vector XI, we computed three vectors QI, KI, and VI using three matrix multiplication with weight matrices WQ, WK, and WV. And now we have a query sequence Q, a key sequence K, and value sequence V, and the sequence length is T, the same as the input sequence. Next, we will apply some operations to these matrices step by step to compute the attention matrix and the final output of this attention layer. In the first step of this attention layer, we take vector QI and vector KJ and perform a dot product between them. But as I have explained in my previous video, for dot product, the first vector must be a row vector and the second vector must be a column vector. So we have to transpose vector kj to get a column vector kj transpose, which has d by 1 dimensionality. Now performing this dot product will result in a scalar output as shown in the right. We can repeat this process for all values of i and j from 1 to sequence length t. And at the end, we get a similarity matrix, or as the authors call it, the compatibility matrix. We can directly perform this operation using a matrix multiplication between q and k. But note that we still have to transpose matrix k so that their dimensions would be compatible for matrix multiplication. After this multiplication, on the right, you can see the compatibility matrix shown in purple. Next, we have to scale the dot product of Q and K by a factor 1 over square root of DK, or simply 1 over square root of D, since we assumed that D equals DK equals DV. So now, why this scaling is necessary? Note that in the literature, there are two main types of attention. Multiplicative attention, like this dot product attention, and additive attention. Although we are not covering additive attention in this video, but it's important to note that dot product attention is more efficient than additive attention. And both perform fairly similar as long as the dimension d is small. However, when the dimension d is very large, dot product attention without this scaling factor actually performs poorly compared to additive attention. But authors of the paper Attention is All You Need say that this is in fact due to having large variance. So to understand this, if we say that we start with a Q and K vectors that have normal distribution with zero mean and unit variance, then the resulting dot product of Q and K will have variance D, and this will push the output of softmax, which is our next step, to regions with very small gradients, and that is the vanishing gradient problem. So now we go to step 3 to apply softmax function to our compatibility matrix. As a recap of softmax function, given vector z from z1 to zn, if we apply softmax, we get an output vector sigma z1 to sigma zn, where each sigma zi is computed by the exp of zi divided by the sum over the exp of all the elements of vector z. There are two important properties of the output of softmax. The first property is that each output is between 0 and 1, 
And the second property is that the sum of all the outputs of softmax is 1. So now we apply softmax to each row of the scaled compatibility matrix. So that means in the output, sum of each row will be 1. And this is our attention matrix. And finally, in our last step, we take the attention matrix from the previous step. So we call it matrix A, and it has dimensionality T by T, where T is the sequence length, and the matrix V, which has dimensionality T by D. And we perform the matrix multiplication. In this case, we don't even need to transpose anything because the dimensionality of the left and right matrices are already compatible. The result of this will be a new matrix of size T by D. And this is the final output of our attention layer. So we have covered the scaled dot product attention. I hope that uh, you find this video useful. And in the next video, I will explain the multi-head self-attention, which was proposed by the same paper, Attention is all you need. Thanks for watching.